Okay, back on camera. I'm probably gonna be looking in the wrong direction for a lot of it because camera's like, lens is way over here and everything else I'm doing is over here. Um, I ran out of excuses not to do a video. I'm really just gonna do about the laziest kind of video I can think of, which is a chatty, chatty get ready with me. It's so funny because I like normally hate those kind of videos or I used to, I don't really hate them now. But to get me to just film literally anything, it is beautiful outside. It finally hit spring in Ohio, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I don't have anything in particular that I'm going to talk about today, and I'm not going to spend all that much time on, like, you know, techniques or anything. I'm just going to be, like, doing my makeup, getting ready for the day. It is, like, the middle of the day, um, but I don't really have much going on today except for um, I might go grocery shopping because I'm like out of food and um, I have a little bit of work later today. Nothing crazy, not going to do any kind of like off the wall makeup because I have to be in public and see a client today. So oh, I'm not trying to do anything crazy off the wall. Okay, we've already wasted so much time just talking about nothing. Um, so I've already prepped my face, uh, my skincare. I have no makeup on right now. I just have um, like a, a sunscreen lotion. And uh, the foundation I'm gonna be using today is the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint in the shade Light 5. Um, Beauty Blender really does not get the credit they deserve for how good their complexion products are. Um, when they came out with their first foundation, right, everybody ripped them a new one because the packaging was so, uh, like, non-functional. It's the one that had a pump that was also, like, a palette. You were supposed to just put the makeup directly on it and... Um, also people complained about the shade range, which was huge, but I don't know, apparently everybody thought there was too many, like, middle shades, um, which I guess I sort of get, but also, like, as a person who has a, you know, light medium to medium skin tone with a pretty strange, like, very yellow olive undertone, I sort of appreciated it and probably the only foundation I have that like really perfectly matches me is from Beauty Blender from the foundation line that they have since discontinued and I've seen is on clearance on Sephora so during the Sephora sale I bought an extra bottle of it because it's discontinued and the texture of it's just so amazing like it's a favorite of mine and it no longer exists so that's pretty cool i'm wondering if beauty blender is going to come out with a another version of that like a a whole um a full coverage foundation but just without that dumb packaging because i think a lot of people complained about that plus it was like quite bulky and like not very eco-friendly right it's like a huge plastic and glass container um so this stuff is great like this they call it a skin tint but like it's got a good amount of coverage you know what i mean like this is not just like a skin tint but um but yeah but the texture is amazing it sits on the face amazing the shade match is pretty incredible for me um again Say what you want about Beauty Blender and how ridiculous they are for selling these sponges for $20 a pop. <laughs> I've never bought them full price. Um, but somebody there knows what they're doing when it comes to shades. Like, 
I'll be the one standing in the corner uh, trying to defend all these makeup brands that everybody rips on because I just use what works for me and frankly I don't really care I'm not about the drama in the makeup world <laughs> so dumb Okay. I think that looks so good. <laughs> like, it's like the perfect amount of if you're like, I would call this a, a medium coverage. Um, and all you would need is, you know, spot concealing. Maybe if you have some more things to cover up. Um, I just have like my usual pattern of concealer that I do to do just a little bit of brightening and like concealing areas where I tend to get a little bit of discoloration. I've had a pretty rough month, you guys. I mean, it's really turning up. It feels like it's turning up now. Like, maybe the sunshine or whatever. I don't really know what's making it better, but... You know, I just had some disappointments last month. Um, you know, some things that hit me emotionally I really didn't expect were going to hit me that bad. Um, and I was just in a real slump I was kind of grieving um and I'm not gonna go into why but you know if you've ever had those times where you know it's just gonna take time to get over something and there's not really that much you can do in the meantime you just gotta wait oh. that's what I've been going through but I do have a good support system, um, you know, a few good friends I keep close and who check in with me and I know would do anything if I needed them. So that definitely helps. I know it's hard for other people. It's hard as a friend to see a friend hurting and not and feel like you can't really do anything you know you just kind of gotta sit with them and their and their pain and their grief um, but I, I certainly appreciate that um, I am using the milk makeup uh, flux concealer I really like it. I've had it for a long time. It is almost empty and I am like scraping. What's kind of cool about it is um, it's a squeezy tube. I never really thought about this, um, but it's a squeezy tube. So like once it starts to get low, you can like squeeze it up to the top and you could even squeeze it out of this thing if you wanted. Um, but it like really helps you get all the product out. So you're not like, I can't get to the bottom because it's in a tube like this. You know, like eventually at some point there would maybe be some product at the bottom that the wand couldn't get. So good on milk for that. What kind of makeup are you guys into these days? Does, uh, are people wearing makeup? Like, are you going out places now that you're waxed and vaxxed? I know the trend for young folks is um, like more. I don't want to. I don't even want to call it minimal makeup because I don't think that's what it is. It's like the illusion of minimal makeup. Um, really dewy products and. 
tons of blush and like um, just like yeah really like dewy very skin like in that like you know you're attempting to look like it's not really that much makeup but it, it is um, you know, and that kind of euphoria look, I guess, where the makeup's not, um, not really structured the way that it used to be. It's more like kind of free, um, you know, maybe messier, using all one color, using like gems or glitter and things like that. Almost like the festival makeup of like 2013 just extended into everyday life is what it seems like um it also seems like to me quite influenced by um maybe k beauty and j beauty um you know in beauty trends there where you know the glass skin thing and everybody looks extremely like it's made to look extremely youthful with just like all this blush and like this pouty, just slightly stained lip. I get people like to jump on trends and all of that. And I've certainly, you know, as the years pass, I adopt little things that are trendy into my routine or I'll try some things. But over the years, of having done makeup now for like almost 20 years that's that's crazy sounding but um is that you know trends come and go and you do not have to follow them like just because you saw somebody do something on tiktok or instagram or wherever like if you're interested in that okay but like it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily look great on everyone. And that's not necessarily the point of makeup, but, but like a lot of the things that have become trendy to me, um, you know, we got to kind of look at the influences and, and what are we saying when we say this is the, this is the look right now, right? Like 2014 to 2017, 2018 maybe was sort of that like, heavy, almost like drag makeup where you're completely painting on a new face and carving with contour sticks and high, like, like those really dramatic reels that you'll see of people who are just like drawing color, like they look like clowns and then they blend it out and it looks beautiful. Um, I've never been that extreme. Uh, to where I'm like trying to create a completely different face but I have done full coverage makeup since I was basically 13 or 14 so like I know what I'm doing <laughs> I know what works for me and I forget sometimes that like these are young people who are just trying things for the first time or learning themselves. There's so much more material now to learn and try different techniques that was not available when I started doing makeup. Before you would just either learn from like somebody you know, like a sibling or your mom, or you'd like see it in a magazine, like a, a young miss, you know, or like a, a teen people or something like that. Like, and you get those, what, like once a month maybe? So like our exposure to techniques and ideas was extremely limited. Uh, and so a lot of it has been trial and error, like years of me just like figuring out what works and what looks good to me. But maybe I'm just reminding both young people and older people like, you don't have to buy all new products. You don't have to do whatever just because 
somebody said that's what's better looking. Um, the like trend now where people are putting so much blush up, up here around their eyes. Uh, it's a little likened to like 80s blush almost, like just heavy, heavy and very up high. Like we act like we discovered something new. Like no, it's been done. Like whatever you think is new has been done. It's just being reincorporated in, in different ways. Everything comes back around. Okay. This is a, a bronzer from Tarte, Park Avenue Princess. This is like trial size that I like dug out of somewhere. I'm really getting a lot better with my purchasing habits um, and making efforts not to buy uh, not to just buy things <laughs> because I have so much in my collection and it's all great stuff and I'm you know I hold on to things for way too long which is fine I don't care if anybody has a problem with that like it's my makeup I'm gonna put it on my face no matter how old it is unless it like has a weird texture it smells weird or something but I hold on to things, right? Like, I don't just declutter for the sake of, like, making space in my collection. Like, I declutter when I know it's something I'm really not going to use anymore. And, you know, I only get new things that I think at this point it's really adding to my collection. It's something I don't have anywhere else. This is Too Faced Papa Don't Peach Blush. Um... The one that came back out when they launched the peach palette, you can see I've done quite some damage. It's really weird because it looks like and feels like it has hard pan. Like it, it looks and feels extremely textured, but it comes off on the brush and on my face just fine. But it's always been like that. I don't know if that's just some part of the formula that, that does that, but like you can see the imprint of the pan in there. That's how much I've used this. It's a good one. Anyway, back to the whole like dewy skin um, being really popular right now. It, it, you know, the marketing gets me. The marketing is like, hey, this is what all the beauty YouTubers are doing right now. This is what's cool. And it's, I'm going to be honest, it gives me very much like a pick me energy. Like, I'm not like other girls. I don't need to wear a lot of makeup. So I'm just doing like a little tint and I'm trying to look really like myself. And I'm not like one of those girls who has to, you know, put on a ton of makeup to feel confident. That's the vibe it gives me. There's a pretentiousness to somebody who... insists they don't need that much makeup nobody needs makeup like makeup is fun I do it because it's fun it's literally one of the most enjoyable parts of my day uh, like this is this is my house of worship uh, this is my this is my offering it makes me feel good um, just doing it regardless of even how it turns out um, I like the process I like the steps that I take again I've been doing this for almost 20 years so I have to remind myself sometimes that I know what works for me and I don't have to do the new thing um, just because that's what works for somebody else or that's what looks good on somebody else um, you know if they want their face to look a certain way they want their their look to look a certain way 
that's fine. But I kind of hate the culture of like, this is what we're doing now. Like that old like 2016 full face thing is out now. It's over now. Um, like, if you still want to do that, do that. Like, if you want to be, you know, Manny MUA full glam 2016, do that. Don't let someone else on the internet tell you that like that's not cool anymore because it's gonna circle back around in a couple of years they're gonna go back to that heavy you know fully like painted on drag face makeup um, and you know the more you get to know yourself you know what you actually like and what a waste of money it is uh, to buy products just because there's a new look that's in vogue Okay, I'm also adding a little bit of L'Oreal Paradise Enchanted blush. I don't know if they make these anymore. It was one of those, like a peach line that came out some years ago. It's supposed to be scented, but they don't really smell like anything anymore. But great quality, holy crap. Beautiful. I have another one that's like a deeper color and the lid snapped off. It's so annoying, but I, I have it still because it's, it's great quality and a, a great texture. So like you see me put blush on my nose. I never used to do that. That's one thing that popped up in the last couple of years as a trend that I adopted. I was like, oh, you know what? That's kind of cute. And I tried it and I was like, you know, that kind of, that kind of makes sense. It's a little sun swept, um, or adding a little bit of blush, like around the temples, you know, kind of experiment, try and see, really pay attention to when you're doing your makeup. What do you like? What works for you? If you're looking at it and you're like, well, I did exactly what he or she said to do and it looks weird on me or I don't like seeing my face like that or you know I did that and then 30 minutes later my face was so greasy it all just started to, to wipe off and I couldn't hug somebody because I knew I was gonna get wet makeup all over their shirt um, the exclusivity of certain types of makeup right now everybody is dissing matte makeup like matte uh, you know, non-shiny. Uh, anything that's not dewy. Everybody's kind of like talking shit on now. They're like, oh, and that. I used to use uh, shape tape and, you know, now that's too heavy and uh, too drying for me. And I'm like, well, what the, f you were singing the praises, praises of it some years back. Is your skin that much different now that this product is crap no you just changed your opinion because everyone else in the beauty space has changed the way they're doing their makeup so now you have to be like well i guess i don't like this anymore i just i can't stand and maybe it annoys me because i've watched a lot of these youtubers for like six plus years now so i've watched the change from them like raving about certain things to saying they're their least favorite products and them just like moving on to a totally different aesthetic and sorry my nose ring and like it's well and fine to change your mind about things people grow people change um but that look is not right for everyone and literally doesn't work for everyone I have oily skin. I've mentioned this a thousand times. I have oily skin. I'm 33 and I still have oily, oily skin. Uh, within an hour of me, you saw me, I powdered my whole face, right? It is dry to the touch. Nothing will come off um, even if I swipe it because I've powdered it completely. When I wear makeup in the style that 
is popular now. When I put that type of makeup on without setting with any powder or only setting in certain places, which I don't really understand how anybody can do that and have it look natural in any way. Um, it does not stay within an hour, especially on a warm day, it will be like somebody hit me in the face with a super soaker, like just oily, just greasy, shiny. There's no point in me putting any highlighter on because my whole face looks like it's made of highlighter. And I just feel like, how can we say that a certain skin texture is in vogue? It, it, in order to make that a trend, like I've always had dewy skin. I don't get a choice. Uh, I spent all this time perfecting how to make it last through its natural dewiness. So I don't know. There's something about it that really rubs me the wrong way. And it feels subtly discriminatory and maybe I'm way out of left park about that but that's just my opinion um I am using the Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette remember when I said I I use all my old stuff and keep all my old this is the original baby the original Sweet Peach Palette it just seems like it's good for like a spring day like today does anybody else feel like that I just want to know is anybody else like an oily skinned person who was like what the f is going on with all this hype around dewy makeup and you know wet glossy everything does that annoy anybody else because it annoys me I mean like again do your makeup how you like do it do what feels good for you do what makes sense for how you want to look and what your skin type is. But when all the brands are following the, you know, the purchasing habits and changing all of their releases and getting rid of things that work for oily skinned people, you know, there's just something about it that really feels gross. And I'm like, I've, I've been around long enough to see how much trends are just that. They are just trends. And it's important to pay attention and not just buy things because that's what somebody said is in fashion now. One day I'll be more eloquent. It's hard to talk to nobody. I know I already said that before, but... It's hard to organize my thoughts when I'm just like monologuing. And you know, I get it too. I totally went through like wearing way less to almost no makeup, like through the pandemic when I was wearing a mask every day to work. I just flat out stopped wearing makeup. And it was kind of nice, right? Like I just sleep in. But it made me sad because I'm somebody who enjoys doing their makeup. And I just feel felt like there wasn't as much opportunity to, to do it with the exception of just like, you know, putting on a whole face and like hanging out of my house by myself. And so, you know, I could see how, how ch some, in some ways, people would change their habits. That makes complete sense. You know, we changed our clothing habits. I pretty much exclusively live in some form of loungewear. Uh, I don't even wear, like, real bras anymore. It's just, like, bralettes. Or, like, light sports bras kind of thing. You'll notice a lot of beauty YouTubers who are more aged, more experienced, will tend to stick to certain 
certain techniques that work for them. You know, if you've ever watched like Emily Noel, she's, I don't know, I think in her forties. Um, and she pretty much does her makeup like exactly the same. She just uses different products and she's been doing that for how many years? You know what I mean? Nobody's like, oh, you should do like just a sheer tint and put a ton of dewy gloss all over your face. Like she wouldn't, she would maybe try that, but like her every day, she's a mom, she's busy. Like she doesn't have time for that. That makeup is for like exclusively making TikToks <laughs> or Instagram reels or whatever. Like. And maybe that's what it is too. A lot of young people and the trends are not following what's practical for like just somebody who is wearing makeup out somewhere. It is what looks good on film. What looks good in a photo. I only have to look like this for, you know, as long as it takes me to get the photo or get the TikTok video done. And I'm not hating on people who do TikToks or, or social media type, type of stuff. Like, that's great for you. Um, I just don't see how that's very instructive. <laughs> um, you know, to make it out as if like, it's something that is practical for anybody in everyday life. I can't even imagine going through a full day of high school with a wet, dewy face of makeup. But then again, I had like pretty bad acne then and I would not have been a fan of all this sheer tint stuff that's going on. You decide what you want makeup to do for you. Do you want to highlight a certain part of your face? Do you want to change the shape of something? You don't have to do all the steps. You can just pick a couple of them. Or borrow from one trend that's happening and incorporate that like I did with the, with the blush on the nose. Um, I used to never do winged eyeliner when that came into came back into fashion like five years ago six years ago when all the you know beauty youtubers were all doing like heavy winged liner perfectly sculpted eyes I never used to do that and I started doing that and I got better and better and practiced at it um and now these days lately I've kind of backed away from it a little more I still like it um but I just I don't uh, do it as much more because I think I just like don't want to take the time <laughs> I just want to be done and what liquid liner is a little bit more unpredictable pencil liner you can you have a little more control and I I, I need that control some days <laughs> I think I'm gonna do a series talking about the old old makeup I have or you know going through collections of mine um because I think it's good to just keep people in check when there's always new things coming out. Um, to be conscious of your purchasing habits, at least for someone like me. So, nobody close to me, no close friends of mine, I think have any issues with overspending on, on beauty products. That's really just exclusively me. But, um, you know, that it really matters so much less what the product is and more what it does for you. Right? I don't need the newest palette all the time if I have, you know, 15 other palettes. I will find what I'm looking for, hopefully, in one of them. And that's not to say I don't ever buy new makeup or new palettes. Probably my biggest sin is 
lip products, particularly lip gloss, because that's kind of my kryptonite product. I've been in love with lip gloss since I was like 12 or 13, and it's never stopped. I was a, you know, Y2K teenager, and those Jessica Simpson, Britney Spears, glossy pink lips were the thing, and I've never gotten over it. <laughs> Um, so I will hoard lip glosses, but I do use them. I just tend to kind of go back to the same ones over and over. And so I'm like, how do I justify buying another one? Um, again, I've gotten way, way better with my purchasing habits, but, um, yeah, I do, I do still, you know, uh, occasionally introduce a new, a new member to the family. Yeah, I don't, I'm not loving the inner corner highlight. It's kind of, kind of a dull satin. The thing about Too Faced shadows is they're extremely like user friendly, I think. Like they do what they need to do. You know what I mean? They're they they will they will work horse for you. They're great go-to, like dependable and relatively predictable. They usually come through. You know, they might have a shade or two in, in a palette that's like, what is this? Unusable shade but for the most part they have it i heard that um the founders have left the company i know they sold to estee lauder a little bit ago but i wonder what it's going to be like now it's probably going to be terrible it was already going downhill once they sold to estee lauder and now this is probably a nail in the coffin for that company maybe not but Gosh, I remember buying Too Faced at Sephora, like, when I was, like, 15. So probably, like, 2005, 2004. I don't know if I'm going to have time to go to the grocery store. It took so much time doing this. So. But again, I enjoyed this a lot more than I enjoy going to a grocery store. The bushy brow thing too. Oh my gosh. I love that bushy brows and boy brows or whatever you want to call them are were in style, are in style. I don't know. Everybody's saying like Bella Hadid has skinny brows, so everybody should have skinny brows now. For us like naturally thick browed people, we've been waiting for thick brows to be cool, so Why do random white women get to determine what is fashionable? Like, aren't we past that now? We have the whole internet. You have access to so many different kinds of beauty now. Why are we looking to some 20 year olds? Like they are repeating the same mistakes that we did in the early 2000s. And I'll say it right here, right now. That was the ugliest time in human history that I'm aware of. The fashion was pretty terrible. The music was pretty terrible. The movies and the shows of reality TV height. Um, like everything was atrocious why are we putting that on a pedestal i get there's some some reclaiming of some of that sort of like um reclaiming of like bimbo culture and i i dig that uh but like why are we picking back up on like the most traumatic parts of that which was like being so skinny you could wear your jeans just above your crotch like with your stomach all hanging out and that only works for like petite and teenage bodies and not all teenage bodies even like a select amount of teenage bodies that have not developed like adult sex characteristics like wide hips 
you know, different things like that. It's just, it's astounding to me that anybody thinks any of these things are good ideas just because some skinny 20 year old put them on and we're like, oh, that's fashion. No, it's not. I'm going to do what I just said and not put liquid eyeliner on. I also have like 5,000 pairs of fake eyelashes that I don't wear because I only really feel like they're appropriate for like going out like to bars and clubs and stuff I don't feel comfortable wearing like fake eyelashes elsewhere because if they're too natural they're not worth putting on for me and if they're dramatic then I'm uncomfortable wearing them in like everyday settings also, is anybody interested in, like, I know fragrance is kind of having a moment. Does anybody want to see, like, me talk about my perfumes? I don't have a massive collection like a lot of beauty YouTubers have. But the things I do have are well-loved. And I've chosen with great specif specificity. Okay. I think that's about good. And then I'll do a little tight line. I feel like that's a very old makeup YouTuber thing. Like, people don't do that anymore. It's very uncomfortable and hard to do without poking yourself in the eye. I didn't put any highlighter on. Another oldie but goodie. Um, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nicole Guerrero mine's filthy um and very well loved i don't know if you can see all the all the dents in it i remember the day i got this and like swiping it on my arm and like showing my boyfriend like he would care <laughs> oh doggy Everybody shies away from highlight these days. I'm a natural girl. I don't want my highlight to be blinding. I'm sorry if anybody feels attacked by what I'm saying, but nobody else on the internet is saying it, so. It's not like I'm monetized. I don't care if people hate what I say. <laughs> Um, really quickly, just gonna put my mascara on and then I have to be done because my camera is pissed. <laughs> that I've been filming for over an hour. There we go. There we go. This is NARS Climax Mascara, the miniature one. If you're ever gonna get a high-end mascara and they sell a mini, get the mini. Get it. Everybody else seems to hate this mascara. Like its reviews are not great. I like it. I don't know. Mascara is a very personal thing, like based on what you want and what you need for your lashes. For mine, I don't know, this seems to do whatever it is I want my lashes to do. They look like wispy and sexual. <laughs> right? I don't know. It gives me like, if I was wearing false lashes, I would want them to look like this. It reminds me of my tried and true 
um, what is it, Maybelline Lash Stiletto. Mascara trends are funny too. Does anybody remember when everybody was talking about the Super Sizer mascara? Oh my god, I remember when literally everyone on YouTube was like, my favorite. And I was like, this is not the most easiest to use. And now nobody talks about it. I don't even know if it exists anymore. And it feels like it was just like yesterday. All right, unless you have long lashes, I don't necessarily recommend this for your lower lashes. The brush is kind of bulky. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Um really quick I'm gonna put uh, a lip product on this is the newest gloss to my collection it is the Laura Mercier lip gloss a I got this during the Sephora sale oh my gosh so good so so good I felt really stupid buying this because whatever it's just a gloss and it's so expensive oh my god and I was like I'll just try it and if I need to return it because it's not worth the money but boy is it worth the money it, for somebody who is a junkie like me this smells amazing it feels amazing Oh my god, it's like so balmy feeling and like, but it's thick still. Like, you just know. You just know your mouth is happy when you have this on. And it comes in different colors. I just got like a basic kind of, it's a sheer like rose. Um, and god, it's amazing. So, do recommend if you're the kind of person who would overspend on lip gloss. Um, that is everything folks um, hope you enjoyed yourself a little bit and um, I will hopefully talk with you again soon please like and subscribe it does nice things for me and my channel and I will talk with you later